Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are back. Friday night, baby. We are back in the fact. Welcome, welcome, welcome to High School Basketball Weekly, episode 19. Can you believe it, Coach? We 19 episodes deep? It's wild. It's wild to think about. 19. In the middle of madness. We still coming to you, baby. Facts. And I want to say pause in that 19 deep, too. That sound crazy. Listen, <laughs> we got some special guests in the house tonight. So y'all, y'all sit back. Y'all, y'all get it soon. All right. Definitely. Three special guests tonight. Y'all know what it is. High School Basketball Weekly, baby. Coach, coach. Marsh Madness, baby. Marsh Madness. Man, we are right in the thick of it, huh? Absolute chaos. Guys from New York stepping up. We got brothers from Long Island playing each other. Man, the madness is unreal. I mean, Yale just beat over. <laughs> Go figure. Go figure. Sh shout out to uh, my guy, you know, that's that's doing this thing out in Long Island. My little young man, he know who he is. One of my students, he's cousin to the Ziegler brothers. Awesome, man. So, what a nice big shout out to T. Sean. Definitely. His uncle runs the MAC tournament out there as well. So I will be at Amityville this summer. <laughs> but right now, Gregorio is leading South Bronx Prep 44-41. Three minutes left in the third quarter. We'll be keeping y'all tuned in. But tonight, we have three special guests, right? Our so, first Jim guest is, you know, a phenomenal young man. Um, grade point average off the charts, 4.0. Uh, definitely Catholic school, all-league player. Definitely a all basketball heads player for sure. And he's doing some great things this year. Uh city champion. That's right. He's accomplished a lot in his career at McClancy High School. So we want to bring on my guy and yours, coach. And yours, coach. Why don't you introduce our next guest, coach? <laughs> Our guy, Jaden Blake Gaston, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's happening, young man? What's up? Thank you for having me. Oh, man. What a pleasure. So, so happy you could join us. How does it feel to be a champion, my man? You're, you're a champion. Uh, it's it's crazy. I <laughs> I never really thought, you know, starting my year, I had big, you know, expectations. But to win a city championship, you can't even, I can't even explain it. I can't. Hey, I want you to show everybody that shirt, right, that you got on right now. <laughs> oh, yes. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, Jay. Listen, I'm a grown man and then some. I always brag about my city championship, and we won. I was in 86. This is before you even thought of, and I'm still bragging about it. So, man, you're going to have something to brag about forever. So, congratulations to you and your team, man. And I'm so Thank proud you. of you, man, because, look, you came out to the Tom Kachowski All-City game 
last year you played your heart out and you know did your essay you know you you was the guy that was did it in the classroom and on the basketball court so we we just want to celebrate you tonight young man and let you know how proud we are of you and man the rest of your future man is going to be golden i appreciate it yeah, a thousand percent. Poo, poo, you know, nailed it on the head. We know you're talking to a couple schools. We're really excited. We can't wait to see where you end up. You know, we think you got a bright future. You can probably do anything you want. Uh, you know, we know you're going to be successful. But, you know, you recently learned that it's not over. You know, you guys are going to continue to play. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about your upcoming matchup? You know, you got a game just a couple days away. You just had a practice. Give us a little breakdown of what you've been hearing about your upcoming opponent. Well, um, we played Epic South um, earlier in the year, and we lost maybe around by like six points. But um, I think now we're definitely a way different team than we were a couple months ago. Uh, a couple months ago, we were struggling, and now we're, you know, we're city champs. We we ended the year off with a a uh, 15 game winning streak I believe so I we definitely have the confidence we know we could beat them we just have to clean up a few things from uh the game we played them last time Do you know anything about Epic South Um what do you mean <laughs> What do you mean Now you you know that's the team that you guys going to be playing on Sunday yeah. Hold on. Hold on. That's fam, a yo. PSAO champion. Yeah. You better put some respect on the name. And listen, I want to do this first of all before we even move on. Uh, when I had uh, my guy, uh, Ray Austin on here, he, he had made some claims that he heard some things about Epic South. And and I went a little bit too overboard. I want to give a, a super apology to that team because I always hold everybody accountable if we don't have any proven facts right here. All of the guys were eligible this year and, you know, did what they had to do in the classroom. So, again, salute to Epic Stuff and everything that you got going on and congratulations. So now, again, do you know that the head coach of Epic South, Coach Mike Beckles, played at McClancy? Yeah, I do. Okay. I learned that on alumni night when we played them. Oh, uh, oh, oh. So you're familiar with them already. Oh, yeah. you missed it, Pooh. When he you was five first yeah. question, he broke it down. They played them earlier this year and lost them by six points. But he said they've tightened some things up and they're ready to rock. So he knows them very well. Oh, oh yo, this – this this makes for an even better game. Like yep. you know, you know, this just intensifies the drama a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. When you when you got kicked out, he was giving them their props. He definitely was breaking it down, and he said, you know, they're a completely different team. So he said they're prepared, they're ready, and uh, and I know I know he's uh, got respect for his upcoming opponent. Like he said, they're the champs too. Oh yeah, now now we can dig a little bit more on this. This this is good. This is this is gonna be a goodie. We definitely gonna be in the house watching that. Um, yeah. So it, did did coach change his strategy for the first time you guys played to to now, or it was just up to y'all to kind of improve what y'all was doing in the first place? I think it was. I think that night we we really didn't shoot the ball well. We had a really bad shooting night. So I think that's just you know we got to shoot better, obviously. Um. I feel like we missed a lot of free throws that game. I think we missed around 10 free throws. I still remember that game. I'm, we remember in the fourth quarter, we missed like six free throws in a row. And that basically lost us the game. And then I think we just got to play better defensively. We gave them too many open threes last time. I remember them hitting a bunch of threes. And they're obviously a great rebounding team. That's one of their strong, their strong suits. So we know we have to rebound next time we play them. It's a great answer. And you were telling me, you know, before the show that uh, you guys are feeling healthy, you guys are feeling good. Uh, just talk up some of your uh, teammates that have been clutch during the stretch. Uh, like your backcourt mate, some of the other guys who also help you uh, kind of get to this city championship and to this game. Well, obviously our, our whole starting five is big. Joe and Paulo, they're, they're just forces like on the board. They rebound. 
Joe is obviously a rim protector. I remember one game he had like nine blocks, so he's he's always there for us and getting offensive rebounds. And then obviously our two other all league players, uh, James and Lowe, they take so much pressure off me. Uh, I remember like my past two years, my sophomore and junior year, it was definitely harder because the focus was purely on me. And this year they stepped up and you couldn't only focus on me because you had two other players ready to go and put the ball in the basket. So they've all been great. Obviously, uh, Justin Williams, he got called up from JV and he was big in our championship game and in a semifinals game, right. um, being like the shortest kid out there guarding the best player. It's just, it was great to see. Yeah. Your, your backcourt partner, that's, that's James Morales, right? Yeah. He, he put so much pressure on the offense. You know, I, the last game, you know, I watched you guys play. He, he just put so much pressure on the offense. And I think that does take a lot of focus off of you because when they start to focus on him, then you come alive. And then it, it's another problem to deal with, which is it's hard because both of you guys can go to the hole and shoot the ball very well. Um, how How has it been? for both of you guys to be able to do that. And, and I know you kind of mentioned it before, but really like, um, let's just talk about how he has helped your game a lot during your senior year. Well, me and James, uh, we've played AU since maybe uh, freshman year, I think with my dad's team. So obviously playing with him is, it's nothing new. We've always played well beside each other and, I think this year it was more just him taking the next step. I told him, like, he's one of the best players in the league. He has to just show that, and that's what he did. And, I mean, when he's putting the ball in the basket, it's it's just there's nothing you can really do because you have two other people. You want to double-team him, then there's two other people ready to score. Yeah, and I think his transformation this year, Pooh, has really helped, uh, you know, give me a lot of confidence that he could play at the next level because not only could he handle the scoring mode, he's kind of added a lot more tools to his game, a lot more assists, a lot more rebounding uh, this year for a guy who's literally handled the offensive load for two seasons. So it's great to see the rest of the game come alive. And I can't wait to see uh, their matchup against Epic South. I think uh, he's going to have a lot of great opportunities. I think it's a good matchup um, for him. And, you know, talking to him before the show, um, he was mentioning some uh, some colleges that he was potentially looking at. Um, can, and can you talk about just during your research and and looking over basketball? Um, just give you know a lot of a lot of our, uh, listeners or kids, and a lot of guys are parents of kids. You know how tough is Division three basketball, uh, JJ? You know, like like the level is insane. I'm sure that you've you've done your research looking around, and some of the schools you mentioned, like. Franklin Pierce, um, Hartford was a former D1 school. I mean, these are legit basketball programs that are going to be tough and, and ask a lot of you right away. Yeah. Um, Division three is no joke. It's it's the next level. It doesn't matter if it's Division one, two, or three. You're, you're going to run into really good basketball players wherever you try to go. Everyone there can shoot. They're all big, they're all strong, and they're all smarter. Yeah. So it's obviously going to be an adjustment for me to make, but – I'm, I'm ready to make it. Well, they know they ain't got to worry about you in the classroom, my brother. So, you know, I know whatever uh, college gets you and gets your services on the basketball court is definitely going to be uh, very happy. Um, so definitely salute to everything um, you have going on on that sector. But, Coach, let's, let's have some fun with him real quick. All right. Oh, hey, you want me to put him through the couple rapid fires? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Pooh always wants to know right away who's the best dancer on the McClancy uh, basketball team. Who's the best what? Who's the best dancer? Need to know. Dancer. <laughs> oh. mm. Like Probably. who gets sturdy? Who gets sturdy the best? Who's the one mixing it up in the huddles, right? Before the yeah. game and all that. If I gotta say, probably Los. Los is a character. Los is a character. <laughs> he he does everything. Would you? Who's the funniest guy in McClancy? We have a lot of funny guys. James, Ilhan, Los again. 
they're all they all make me laugh. They're they're just they're all great people, man. Now we need some inside scoop. I know Pooh wants to know. Can anyone do a good impression of Coach on the team? Does anyone have a good impression? We were <laughs> we we were just doing an impression of him today. We <laughs> we we do it every day. We <laughs> Cause he's a, we know our, my coach is he's jumping all around everywhere, going crazy. Uh, he stomps on the ground so hard. We were doing that today, you know, just playing around with him. I think it was a uh, who was a uh, Amel today and Los. They were uh, making fun of him for that, but uh, probably Los. Los is just he's an actor. <laughs> now, um, you know, being a guy who's a four point oh student. What are you looking for at the next level, um, college-wise, um, for either academic or athletics? Like, what are you looking for in a uh, for you? Well, I'm looking to uh, major in uh, criminal justice because uh, I want to get into law when I'm uh, older. And uh, I haven't really, like, I don't know yet how long I want to stay in college. Uh, but, I mean, I'll figure that out as I go. Mm-hmm. And then, like, in the basketball side of things, I just want to um, – obviously go somewhere where you know i'm i'm wanted i want to be somewhere where i can help a team i know right away i'm not gonna go somewhere and be a superstar player i am now i'm i know i have to work my way into that but i want to be somewhere where i can help a team you know absolutely i love that and is there any players that you uh model your game after and also who got you um well my dad got me into basketball because he was a He's a all league player just like me. His plaque is up in my room too, with mine. So uh, he got me into basketball, and then players I model my game after. I like uh, my favorite player of all time is Melo. Um, KD is up there, and uh, now I've been watching a lot of Brunson because I'm a Knicks fan. So those three players are definitely the main players I uh, you know idolize and try to you know follow after. Those are three great guys to study. I love those three. Um, tell me who, what video games are the most guys playing, and who's the best gamer on the team? Video games, two K, WWE, Fortnite, Call of Duty. But the best gamer is me. It's me. <laughs> Don't they all say that, Coach? Oh, it's me. It's me. <laughs> With a I'm four point, you, up, I believe him. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely awesome job, my man. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, listen, good luck, man, the rest of the year. And uh, we'll be there on Sunday. You know, Monday, Monday. Stuff. Monday, right? Oh, Monday. Yeah, right. Monday, Sunday, Monday right. 6 Monday. p.m. Monday, 6 p.m. We will be there. LIU, correct? Yep, LIU, Brooklyn. And the opponent is Epic South. Epic South. All right. In the right. remix. Take care. Thank you. Thank good you. luck. All right. Good luck. All right. Thank you. One of the one of the shining stars that has been a kid who's been awesome in that A League for years, and great to have Mon give him some shine. I know the rest of the A League was proud to see him on tonight, which is great. So yeah, yeah, salute to all the student athletes out there doing their thing, and shout out to the whole Gaston family. Um, just an update: fifty five, fifty five, Gregorio Luprion. And South Bronx prep are tied up. Seven minutes to go. Dog fight, man. Wow. Oh, man. Well, listen, I, I, I'm i glad we got to get that, you know, off with that young man and uh, pause that again. But we have two special guests coming on tonight, and we're going to talk about some real, real things when it comes to high school basketball. And we got two experts that's coming on in a few minutes to kind of give their expert opinions about high school basketball. Salute, ball head. What up? What up? Um, oh, Blue, I got uh, I got two breaking things for you. Yes, yes, yes. Because I know my guy likes to stay in the loop, and this is what your boy does. So, that's right. Uh, Ja'Kai Sanders officially reopening his com- uh, recruitment announced tonight. We obviously we may have known about that for some time, but I'll yeah, finish. I saw him going live. I saw him going live. I know he mentioned that there. Yeah, two, uh, March twenty fifth. So what? Three days away. Adam Enjai is going to be committing. 
and he could be staying local, but we will see. But I just had to tell you, a couple things in the works, a couple guards still on the board. I don't know how they are, but they, they still are. It's a crazy time, crazy time. Well, speaking of guards, I got two of my favorite point guards joining me tonight. Yes, sir. All right? Um, one play with me in AAU, and one play with me in high school. So uh, first up uh, is my man, Coach John Arnold, all right? When we talk about expert opinion, we talk about somebody that knows the game, um, high school basketball, AAU basketball, this is the guy to talk to, all right? Oh. So introduce my guy, John Arnold, coming to the stage. Hey. Glenn, Coach what's John, good? what's up, what's, what's up? What's going on? What's good, I'm good. Good, How man. you doing, brother, how you doing? Can't complain, can't complain. Good, good. Look, look, he got the nice, beautiful chandelier in the back. Look at that. Oh, oh, man. oh. oh I'm sorry. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so good. So listen, man. Um, we're gonna have uh Coach Tiny Morton joining us soon, man. But while we got you here on the stage first, man, okay. you mm -hmm. know, we, we definitely want to dive in to okay. to the information, right? Because I think a lot of times a lot of our kids are being misguided. They're not getting the right information and they're not really understanding uh, the path that they have to take to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, they're believing people that they think knows what's going on compared to the people who know what's going on. And I think a lot of times those people who we call handlers, you know, those people- The BAC. You know, <laughs> yeah right all of those people right you know yep. they're, they're, they're in these kids is. Money is the BAC. <laughs> yeah. so what we want to do is you know talk about a wide range of things um okay. and i want to give my guy let me see if he's about to come on because i don't want to drive too deep i have to go backwards but yo it's I, yo let me say this uh we trying to get my guy back on the show. We done did so many shows and I was on live together. Had, you know, joined up a couple of times, but we always talk. We talk every day. Absolutely. At least three times a week. Probably more than that. All right. And and we just diving in to to the importance of, of kids knowing the information. And a lot of times, man, you, you'd be surprised. A lot of kids don't have the right information. And then they're stuck. Right, they're stuck in this time period, not having any place to go or any real focus of where Tough. their future holds. Right, so we want to kind of answer all of those questions. And since you're here, I just want to jump in right off for you know, when do you think a kid should start playing AU basketball? I mean, it's it's tough. Oh, but first, let me let me let me say hello to Brian. It's my first time actually meeting him. We haven't met in person, but you know, love what you do. Thanks, my man. I appreciate yeah, that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It depends. It depends. You you some people some people you know you got some kids that you know that's all they do. They play you know from from six. It's just nonstop basketball, basketball, and. I don't know. I, I, I'm I a underdog guy. I believe in, I love late bloomers. And I think, I think a kid early should experiment with different sports. You know, I, I love kids playing football. It actually translates the basketball, you know, the aggression piece of it. But I just love late bloomers. I, I think too much is too much. I had one coach tell me, oh, we pay, we play 250 games a year. I'm like, hold up, your team is only in the second grade. What are you talking about? But that's what they're doing now. And so it's tough. And I think it, I think it varies. I think it varies. I, I, I'm just not a big fan of, of getting too crazy early, early with it. Coach, bring, so. it, bring the camera down a little bit. I, I see okay. you on the show, your okay. AU. Let's, let's just mention this. Okay. Crown AU. Let's, oh, yeah. let's just oh, give, yeah. tell everybody about the AU program because I want to give you a chance to promote on what you guys do over there and how special that program is if you go to the instagram it, it speaks for itself and I, i'm a guy where i believe you have to be in your lane 
everybody's not an EYBL kid. Everybody's not an Adidas. Everybody's not an Under Armour kid. Yeah. But if you go look at Who Groups page, you know, I, I would jump off the roof to say that, you know, those, those, uh, there's a lot of kids going to school, maybe more than some of the other kids in, in the other um, um, circuits. So Crown is a, a great program where, you know, all the kids go to school. We have access to Island Garden, the sports performance. We have a sports performance piece in the back of the um, um, gym. So you have 24, you have 24 hours constant access to those things. And I think those things are important when you're talking about developing, you know. So and if you ever you ever see Crown, I mean, we beat we beat some shoe teams, a lot of shoe teams last year. You know, definitely probably the hottest, hottest um, independent team last year on the circuit. Crown, you know, Crown the absolutely fact. dominates, dominates hoop group. And they send more kids to college, you know, than a lot of programs. Not a lot of BS, a lot of focus, a lot of Long Island kids, a lot of city kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they got a ton of access to prep schools. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite programs easily. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and Brian, like, you know, I, I, I tell Glenn all the time. So um, one of my big guys is at UConn, right? Yousef, right? Yep. Um, Yousef lived with me, right? For two, three years. But oh, Yousef played with the Lightning, which is, you know, that's that's my family, the Lightning. Yeah. And my son played eighth grade with the Lightning. But I knew, okay, his development is different. Correct. He may not develop in this EYBL environment. Where yeah. I got I'm, I got Yusef playing EYBL and I got my son playing playing hoop group. And I tell everybody you got to find your lane. I'm sorry, say it again. Your son's at Kimball, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You just connected all the dots, like who you are, and I totally know who you are. Mm -hmm. We've talked a million times. I love your son too. Mm -hmm. uh, so funny. Uh, everything just like clicked for me right now as you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. With Brown. but yeah, every kid is different. And this kind of opportunity allows kids that kind of use a different path. You know, like mm -hmm. a lot of times the top guy on Long Island will go to this program, Poo, and be successful. And tonight, you know, Vermont is being led by TJ Long, who's yep. from Crown, who's playing Duke tonight. You know, yep. like it's awesome. So yep. it's, it's full circle with that program for sure. And yeah. they've done, done a great job with the Catholic League and Long Island. Yeah. No, I won't blow nobody. Look, 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 look. We got an, another guest that just stepped in the building. Uh, right, got both my point guards in the building. Coach Tiny Morton. Um, glad you could join us. Uh, and, and look, I, I, I just want to say, John, uh, congratulations on all the things you guys are doing with Crown. Mm -hmm. And you know, look, I, I think more people need to be paying attention to what's going on because, mm -hmm. as they say, you know. It's, it's not about all the noise you make. It's about how many kids you can send to school. Thousand. Bottom line. That's the bottom line. Yeah. So, Tanya, um, you just joined us. Uh, the, the question I asked John early on was uh, how early, right? Or when do a kid, how early should a kid start playing AAU basketball? Uh, AAU basketball? I mean, what is AAU basketball, to be honest? You know, everybody got, everybody seems to be under that umbrella. And they don't really know what AU basketball is. So my thing is, how soon should they play organized team basketball? Mm. Maybe when their parents feel that they, you know, mature enough to go away and play with other people. I don't think they should be thrown into a, a, a situation where someone else is uh, grooming them to be a, a you know a basketball player so early, or or any sport, you know. So when we say AAU basketball, I I, I don't think it's fair to whoever whoever started the AAU organization because now everyone just put in, in, under that umbrella, and it's not it's, it's not fair because the AAU basketball that I was used to wasn't as easy enter as it, as it is today. Yep. It was you one know, team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's three, three. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, like you had to be an all city player to really play. Yeah. You know, organized. I mean, AAU travel. Long Island back. had one. <laughs> yeah. It was different. It was different back then. Obviously, I don't want to talk about the, you know, back then. I'm talking about today, right now, to me is is more or less. And I, I you know, some people are going to going to take take a hit on this. 
it's more or less babysitting. You're babysitting right now. You know, and I don't think any kid, let's, let's look, look at an NBA player, for example. You get in the NBA 20, 20 years old, you retire 34, 35. That's 15 years. Like, how long are you going to do something for 20 or 30 years? And that's what these kids are doing, basically. You're pressuring the kid to be part of a sports or part of a situation for 20 or 30 years. It's not, it's not, it's not real. That, that's not reality. So I don't think you should ever be forced to play AU basketball at all. You should never rush into AU basketball. You should play when your mind, your body, and your parents and your parents feel it's, it's, it's time. No, that's 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 you hit it right in the head. I, I was thinking of some of the same things because you know, uh one of the questions I got asked uh this past week, um by a close family member of mine, you know, about the whole AAU circuit and, you know, how important is it? So I, I think this is a great episode. And then as we get on to the high school and, you know, college recruitment things, I think uh, a lot of ball players can can tap into this and kind of get some information that'll be very important for them um, later on, right? So w- when a kid is choosing, right? Mm-hmm. When a kid is choosing a team, right? We just talking about just any team. So we go yeah. not going to just just say AAU, right? Yeah. What should a kid be looking for? Because you know, in New York, we had like CYO, right? We had all of those pre things before you kind of hit that circuit, right? What What are some things uh, a parent should be looking for when they're looking for a team for their child or for their young, you know, uh, boy or girl? Now let my brother John answer that since he, he's an active uh, parent with the, with the uh, AAU right now. At, at, at what age? At what age, Glenn? We talking early? Yeah, yeah. De- development. You know, you, you you have a lot of a lot of the programs. If you have a big kid, you know, you better understand they. You know, putting your kid on that team to put him under the basket. So I think first and foremost is development. Development and everybody. Every, you'll see. You'll see a bunch of. Um, and you see second, third, fourth grade teams where everything is win, 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 win at all costs. And if you're a parent and you're looking at that, when you look at that coach, you know, who's coaching your kid and and who's developing your kid. I, I, I just, for me, it's hard because I watch a lot of these guys coach and I'm like, ah, he didn't play ball. So a lot of them hate, sometimes hate seeing me because I'm like, I know you didn't play ball. You know, so I think that's the first thing you should look at is who's coaching your kid and are they developing those young kids? You know, that's the first thing. That's that's deep because if you knock out the guys who really didn't play basketball, you knock out half the AAU mm-hmm. programs or the uh-huh. AAU programs. Half? Way more mm-hmm. than half, dude. Way more than half. Yeah, that's a shame. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I agree. It, it depends on it depends on the person philosophy. I mean. There's no big kids when they're young. No one's a big kid unless you yeah, obviously yeah. seven footer, Thank you know, you. at the age of 10 or 12. But if you're not a seven footer, you're not a big kid at all. Everyone's a guard. Everyone should be treated like a guard. So when mm-hmm. I look at programs, of if I go somewhere and I'm watching practices and I see six, four guys doing post moves or practice, then I know, you know, these guys never stepped out of their mm-hmm. zone and understood what basketball was really about, you know. So it, it mm-hmm. definitely depends on the development and, and watching how these guys practice. They're not practicing, mm-hmm. and that's not. It's you know, it's the bad. That's the bad advice, crew. The, 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 these guys mm-hmm. not practicing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and, and it also it also filters. You know, as a kid get older, you see you see every damn near every six six kid, six seven kid thinks they're a wing right now, mm-hmm. and and they think okay, I can you know I can work out. You know, I could work out every day, and I could get I could get a handle. I I believe I just believe if you're 15, 16, I don't know how much you're gonna better get better handling the ball. But all of them think they're wings, and and Tiny, you should know that you know this. It those those are sometimes the hardest kids to coach. Yes, but you know what? My best to me personally, uh-huh. Uh-huh. my best my best coaching is with is, is with big guys. I mm-hmm. love coaching big guys. 
mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's what I feed off of. Mm-hmm. Because I want them, because those are the guys that probably have less skills. And when mm-hmm. you teach them something, they they, they, they appreciate it more. You know? mm-hmm. Most guards come in thinking that they, they're complete players. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I watched the kid play, and uh, he was like 6'2". And I was like, okay, cool. Where's your post moves at? Mm-hmm. He's like, post moves? I don't post up. I don't. I, I don't. I, I don't play next to the basket. Mm-hmm. I said, you don't need post moves, and uh, you know, next to the basket, you can do post moves outside from the basket. Mm-hmm. That's a certain level that that he, I guess he hasn't, you know, tackled yet. So it really, it, I mean, the development of our our athletes in New York City has depleted. Has depleted. That's why we have one or two, or you know, three or four spotlights when, when we when we talk about coaches, and it's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Has yeah. training taken over the coaches that was with developing kids early? Because a lot of us learned from coaches. Plan. 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 We learned from plan. I'm glad you said that, John. I'm glad mm-hmm. you said that because mm-hmm. the way the way I used to run my practice sometimes, because like a teacher, you can't keep drooping the kids the same, you know, skill, the same techniques. Mm-hmm. You gotta you gotta mix it up. What mm-hmm. I used to do, I mean, you guys probably seen in a couple of films, you know, we have fun and play for things. Well, you used to always play Utah 21. And that was our mm-hmm. practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be a practice yeah. session. Because mm-hmm. these kids, some of our kids never been in the park. And to, to learn how to, to uh compete, you know, get trapped. You know, if you're a big guy, you can't dribble, then you know, you're gonna have a problem. If you're a little guy, you can't rebound, you can have yeah. a problem. So those are the situations a lot of these kids. I'm not putting some of these kids are set up on AAU programs by their parents. They're the best player, quote unquote, their yeah. whole life until they get into some situations where they have to compete. You know, that's the sad mm-hmm. thing about it when we call this AAU stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what he does with the wings, coach. He puts them in the, <laughs> he puts them in a little Utah, baby, and he figures huh. out who's in the post, who's dribbling. <laughs> yeah. But but that but that was one of the best teachers. You got kids now. I I've heard some parents say, "Oh, I don't I don't let my kid play in the park." That's crazy to me. That, that is crazy. Everything now, and, and this is what, like like I love the training, but I also there has to be some things you figure out on your own by just playing. Too much is too much training. And you probably see a lot of kids. You could tell they play like they like you know all they do is train. Yeah, there's like no, there's no improvising. Yeah, yep. that that's that's some great answers. Yo, 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 bud, I got the Fox Forty, but it it sounds. <laughs> who's doing that? Who? Nah, it, sound, it sounds like air, right? Yeah, it sounds right, like right. air. It's not a Fox Forty, bro. Yo, it's a Fox Two right now. He he bought me the Fox Forty. But you need so, you need the you need the Fox Forty on the court. That Fox Forty rings. Look. You, you got the bird. The work. The bird whistle is perfect for the show. Yeah. Th- thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I you got, appreciate the, bird, you got that. the bird call whistle. There you go. There you go. Chill out, bud. Chill out. <laughs> Relax. Now, um, look. Let's let's talk about it. A lot of kids get a lot of bad advice, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of kids get a load of bad advice uh, from handlers, from you know, quote unquote. Uh, you know, around the way coaches and people that they BAC, that think they know say BAC. What is BAC? Please break that down for me, man. <laughs> it's the bad advice crew. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's the bad said, advice crew. You man. did say I mean, that. You did say that. Yeah, you man. did say that the last show. That's yeah. right. The bad advice crew. That's yeah. true. They never, you know, the, the, the crazy thing about bad advice crew, they never get penalized because they disappear <laughs> once they do something. To, to to misdirect somebody's future or or do something yep. that's not right. They never miss. Tiny, yep. they never miss. They, they, they just yep. go into the wind. They just they just you know go to the side. But Tiny Morton, you know, don't graduate one kid. He's a terrible coach. Wow, the the bad advice crew, right? Give me give me some bad advice that you heard uh, a story that you know about. You don't have to name names, but situations that you guys heard about um in you know in your tenure of coaching oh my for me God. Oh my both God. of y'all just run down some time you, you, you go, go first. first i could go on days go first. 
<laughs> I mean, I, I got a few, man. I'm not gonna name a name, but right. I had a situation where where I had a kid at Lincoln for three years, and um and um somebody told him that Lincoln High School don't graduate players, right? <laughs> Which they didn't know the dynamics of Lincoln High School, right? So they, they they convinced the kid to go to prep school, right? This kid ended up going to prep school for two years, right? He ended up going to college, Division One, had a solid career. But the fact that he had a chance to leave in Lincoln High School as probably the winningest player before Lance Stevenson, mm. it kind of hurt. You know what I'm saying? So whoever's listening to this, know the story, know exactly what I'm talking about. But those are one of the situations where I thought that you know the parents and whoever else was involved didn't, didn't really understand you know what was going on at Lincoln High School at that time. My bad, y'all see me looking back because Gregorio Lupion is about to lose to South Bronx Prep. They're up eighty to seventy-seven with five seconds to go. And this is the series going to play against the Catholic School League. I, I I didn't even know this game was going on, but salute to both teams. Um, I was speaking to Coach Haskins earlier, and Coach Haskins said that. And I can say this name because it's already gone. You know, people know the story. Uh, Cosell Brown was one of the top guards in the country. He was number two behind Isaiah Thomas. He was at Alexander Hamilton. He left Alexander Hamilton um, after his junior year to go to Oak Hill. He was actually the first player from New York to go down to Oak Hill. And we never heard of him after that. Mm. Mm. Because he got some bad advice from someone saying that, you know, the grass is greener over at Oak Hill instead of staying at Alexander Hamilton and finishing up with Beetle Washington, Andre Irvin, you know, Jerry Ice Reynolds, Carrie Scurry, and all of those guys who were there, right? And think about this. Coach Haskins had 24 guys on the team, and 12 of them went Division One, two of them to the NBA. He was and cheating. One. Huh? He was cheating. Who said that? <laughs> Everybody say that. You can't have that many good players. You got Tiny, they said the same thing about you. <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Now, yes. now think about that. Now, it's another thing I want to tap on to, too, right? When we talk about kids going to other schools, now, we're not talking about the Cosell Brown situation where he, he left and went out to – uh Oak Hill, but we talked about a kid that may want to go. Let's just say this because everybody know this story, right? A uh, Eugene Lawrence averaging 30 at Canarsie. 30 points killing everybody. No office, no real attention. Goes to Lincoln, changes his whole life forever. Right? Now, that situation worked out, and a whole bunch of other situations probably worked out with kids who might want to leave and go to another school. But then we get coaches who become mad at players because they want to leave. I always felt like if a kid wants to leave, they should be able to leave. No coach can kidnap a kid and make them play for them. What do you yeah. guys say? I agree. I agree. And And... and... When when it's like that, it's oh, that's it's it's selfish. It's selfish because it only benefits you you as a coach. Definitely, if a kid could thrive, moving on, let him move on, let him thrive. It it makes no sense. But I I, I got a situation, um, um, fellas. Eighth grade had a kid. Glenn, we'll talk afterwards. I'll tell you who it is. Of course, had a kid. Of course. <laughs> sat down with the mother. I said, look. I said, all right, look. And at the time, I was with the Lightning as well. They didn't want him to play because they didn't want him to play with us because, you know, I guess they were going to do something. They promised the kid all these different things. We're going to take you here to train. We're going to do this, do that. And the kid did it. And the kid, like, like the situation we put him in, he was thriving. So that kid now, and it's funny because when we beat them last year, I sat the kid, I sat, I went to say what's up. And I said, I said, damn, I want to say his name, but I can't say his name. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, do you remember what I told you four years, three, four years ago? 
he started laughing. He was like, yes, you were right. Because the guy who promised him all these things eventually backed off and the kid didn't even, he didn't play 17s with this program. And the one kid that played with him in high school that listened and they, he wound up transferring is committed to Hofstra. Mm. 30 offers later. But meanwhile, the school he was at, he was just a rebounder setting screens and, and that was it. Wow. So he he listened to the the, the bad advice crew. I want to touch on on uh, the, the Gino situation because yes, because um, I wasn't recruited to Lincoln High School. I went to Lincoln High School because it was my zone school. I had mm -hmm. a bunch of friends going there, so that was a situation where where it was a no <clears throat> it was a no brainer for me, right? I didn't I didn't. I didn't entertain anything else, even though I had a lot of friends at Grady High School also. You weren't so, being attracted anywhere? No, 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 not at all. And I, and, and I played, I think I played good AAU basketball. I played, you know, Broncos, Gauchos, Sun Devils. I mean, I played around the city, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I, I had a little reputation, you know, and and, and I thought, I, you know, actually I could have went to uh, Jackson because I was living in Queens at one time. No, but, uh, no. You should have. You should have went to Jackson. <laughs> he tried to deter. He tried. Uh, I went to I Jackson. Have, I would have had one. If I'd have stayed in Queens, I'd probably have been something else. I'd have probably been. <laughs> I'm not even gonna talk about that side, but you know, it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't what I thought it was. But but the, the, the talk about the Geno situation, right? Now here's a family that noticed that we was on a higher level when it comes to high school basketball, the platform, right? And he and his this family went to the PSL and told them what they was gonna do. Now, obviously, having Sebastian, who was gonna be McDonald's All American, you know, to have a player like Gino come and either deter what Sebastian was doing or you know, stop what he was doing at Canarsi. So that was a that was a decision that was out of my hands on the in, in terms of you know if he wanted to come or if he was coming or not. The one thing I did do is I allowed them to play together in the summertime. And with Gino and Sebastian play together, it was out of my control. It was more or less, you know what? I don't care what Coach say. You're coming here. You're playing with me my senior year. And we're gonna do it. And and to me. That's not recruiting on the coaching side. That's having a platform. That's having players. LeBron does it all the time. You know, the NCAA is famous for doing it right now. I think I was ahead of my time, you know, when it comes to what's going on today. Absolutely. And, and, I, and, I'm, and, and, and I got, you know, I got, you know, I got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, PSCO, you know, suspensions or, or, you know, people throwing, you know, rocks at me, you know, back then. But now everybody's getting, you know, getting paid for what I did, paid heavily. And all I did was create a, a, a platform and people wanted to use it. If St. John's or Seton Hall creates a platform, they will attract Duke and North Carolina players. Is that recruiting? I don't know about that. But, but Tiny, Tiny, think about this. That's what the Catholic schools do. Every everybody they look at Christ. How you know, John? Did you ever coach at the Catholic school? <laughs> no, 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 I don't. But I, but I'm just saying, everybody looks I at did. Christ the King. <laughs> everybody <laughs> looks at Christ the King. They look at Christ the King and say, "Okay, they got it over there. Let's let's run over there. Let's pile let's pile up over there." That's what's happening. That's I mean, what's that's, happening. I mean, this is a sport, right? And to me, this 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 is I, I don't understand this. If this was any other business, if this was a t-shirt business, mm -hmm. you want the best t-shirts. Mm -hmm. You want the best yep. product. Yep. Like, I don't get this. So if this is a sport, or this is a school, or an academic situation, institution, by any means necessary, by, by any means necessary how do we get this kid to college? Either we're going to use it academically, or we're going to use athletically. So I, I, I just don't understand how people... Now, if my kids wasn't going to college, then you know what? Shame on me. But these kids are going to college. Like 90% mm -hmm. of my kids go to college. 
And you and people only talk about the guys, you know, that other people talk about, which yeah. bothers me. Because today, I can speak to ninety percent of my guys today because I I did right by them. I made sure it's they were Compare that to the rest of the sports in the PSAL. Like, give give some people some reference because there's some teams that don't graduate half their guys from teams. That's, you know? that's a fact. That's the fact. I was looking at the percentage of <clears throat> this, this high school that I used to coach at. Yeah. And when we were at our best, the numbers were up. You know, like if everybody took care of they, their program, if the basketball took care of basketball and, and, and chess took care of chess and tennis took care, or took care of tennis, then everybody would be okay. You know, but mm -hmm. when I was at a certain school, when we were at our highest, and Roman was at it, at the highest, you know, graduation. My program was at it, at the highest, so I, I don't understand why, why people, you know, you know, worry about athletics and, and don't understand that academic and athletics it, it go okay. hand in hand. Go hand in hand. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and and, and mm -hmm. tiny. If I have a kid that I think that would benefit and could play at Lincoln when you were coaching, I'd be a fool not to bring my kid over there. A fool. Yeah, he take, he's taking it serious. He's trying to get into the next level. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. There's no knock to the PSL because I'm a PSL guy. My best year of – one of my best year of coaching was when I went to Nazareth for the first year, and, and we had 11, 12, maybe 13 incoming new, new kids to the school. And sick. nobody gave me a phone call saying, are you over there recruiting? I mean, that was the best feeling that that you know that any coach can have when you know you can you can you can uh, have families come play for you with no headaches, with nobody banging and you know sending you emails or uh, no coaches is hating talking about you know you're about to win another championship. So I'm I'm gonna tell on you. It was a great feeling over there. But if you're not if you're not coaching at if you're a high school coach and you're not recruiting right now, you can forget about it. If you if you're a college coach. And you're not recruiting other players from other teams. You can forget about it. Let's be 100. Yeah. yeah. If you're an NBA yeah. team, you're not yeah. stepping on somebody else's player. You can forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. This is the sport. If, if you don't understand the sport, get out of it. Yeah. So y'all believe that. So I guess you guys believe that um, if a kid wants to leave, he should be able to leave. Did did y'all 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 know about this dude right here? Who's that? That's the glasses on. Oh man, I saw a story. I saw a story. It's cr that's crazy. Oh, the D Division Two kid. Yeah, crazy. That 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 kid. They said that kid was Ubering. They said some of the some of the Michigan State players remember that guy picking him up. He was Ubering. He yeah. he, wow. he played Division Two. I'm I'm gonna play this clip real quick, and, and I just want uh us to just check it out. Then we'll talk about it. Right. Oakland's Jack Gokey set off March Madness with a bang. After helping stun Kentucky with 10 three-pointers and kicking off March Madness with a crazy upset, Goki became a household name, but he really came a long way to get to the biggest moment of his sports life. Before all of this, Goki wasn't really recruited and actually spent five years at D2 Hillsdale College, and now is a grad transfer at Oakland University. His time at Hillsdale was pretty good. He dropped 14 points a game on 40% from three his senior year, but Goki just kept grinding and had similar production for Oakland this season. And even though last night after his breakout performance, he admitted that he probably won't make the NBA. As a player, you can't think that way. You got to go out there and you got to think that you have the same talent level as them. I know they have draft picks and I know I'm not going to the NBA, but. He should enjoy this moment because a March Madness run could take you from overlooked to maybe on the NBA roster one day. Wow. Wow. You know, I was inspired by that story because, you know, a, a lot of kids who, you know, especially today's kid, they a lot of them think they're division one players, right? And and they, they, you know, flick their nose up at the division twos and division three. And, and hopefully seeing this guy, they be inspired to, to be able to go Can't to hear you, places. Man. Hello? I hear you. Yeah. You can hear me, Tiny? Yes, I can hear you. All right, cool. John, I think uh, you, something wrong with your computer. <laughs> but guys and sometimes girls think they can play at 
uh, a higher level than than the talent said they can play. You know, what do you, what do you guys think about that? You know, kids actually knowing the level that they belong on. And whose yeah, job first, is that? You first, Sean. He can't hear. Why you can't hear me, John? Something wrong with you? All right. So, I, you know what? A lot of players are Division One players. And a lot of Division One players are Division Two players. Mm. You know, it's timing. Like, and, and it's, that's one thing I, I don't think parents and, and, and mentors and AU coaches understand the process of recruitment when it comes to Division One basketball. Because it's timing. You know, it's only a, 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 a certain number of scholarships you can you can have each year, right? And if you're not, if you're not, if your position is already taken, then you know you're not going to be recruited by that school. And the portal right now, to me, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. However. It was a bad thing when, when coaches left the school and went for better jobs and left you there stuck yeah. with nothing to do. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you stuck. That was a bad situation also. So, you know, as an athlete, the portal right now is not a bad situation. But the thing that that that, that reminds me about UConn is this. I can't name a starting five. Mm. I can't. That's a fact. And they're about to probably do something special. Mm -hmm. And for me not to uh, be able to, to name a starting five is because I don't think those guys were great All-American high school basketball players. Now, we got a few of them. But we're talking about, you know, coaches that's putting together a good puzzle, a good piece, right? So when, we, when, when, when these kids are, are coached in high school and they're not coached, to the fact where just play basketball, have fun, and work on your weaknesses and let things, you know, let things play, play out. That's when these when these kids are, are, are being, you know, are being part of the, the, the BAC. I think every AU, every youth coach should be coaching, have fun, work on your weaknesses, and love the game. That's it. All the 17 and under 18, that don't mean it doesn't really mean that much when it comes to college recruiting, especially today. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was the question, Paul? I missed the question. No, what what I was saying is, you know, for us kids' levels, like kids, you know, uh, are being realistic with the level that they could play on. Right. And mm -hmm. I think I, I just showed the clip of a guy who played right. D two, and you can see, you know, he was in a weight room, he, he stayed in shape. And they put off one of the greatest upsets ever. Uh, they beat Kentucky, who had countless of McDonald's All Americans and first rounders on that team, and they're not in the uh, contention for a championship. Like, how important is kids to know the level that they should be playing on? I, I think first and foremost, you know, they need to start watching college basketball. That, that's it's it's a it's a grown man game. You know, you, you you got a lot of the lot of the kids. They're not watching. They're, again, they're still watching clips, but they're not watching. This is this is the G League right now. When we're looking at mm. the, on the NC, NCAA, and, you know that kid. That kid was that kid. What 23, 24? You talking about a 16, 17, maybe eighteen year old senior? It's an old game, and I and I think I think most now. So it's funny. I had a conversation with Van. Right, Van making. Van said, John, if you got a kid who's A10 level, tell him to go down, a step down. Mm. If you got a, a kid Big East, go down to the A10 and, and do what you got to do there. And then, and then you know, you move up. He told me, Van told me this, this was during COVID. He said, he said, John, what's going to happen with everything that's going on? He said, the lower D1s are going to become farm systems for the, uh, for the bigger schools. Mm. And that's exactly what it is right now. Go develop down there, then come up. But we have kids who think, oh, yeah, I'm going to go pick this big school. Most of these kids will never play at those big schools. The state of the game right now. They won't play. Mm -mm. 
It's it's tough. It is tough right now. It's sad. That's sad. That's sad to say that because mm -hmm. you know, especially a kid like me, you know, growing up bouncing the basketball, thinking that basketball, mm -hmm. you know, could take me X, Y, and Z. To, to understand that 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 this NBA dream is getting it's getting mm -hmm. further and further away. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We got to, you know, when, when there's weaknesses, you got you got to build up some strength. So, yeah. We got to focus yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. And, and, and Tiny, when we played, I remember, Glenn, we had this conversation. We couldn't wait to play Unlimited yes. when we were younger. Right. We wanted we wanted to play against the grown men. Now it's the it's the complete opposite. You got kids two years older than you know that grade, and they're playing they're playing out. And those are some of the better kids. Yeah. So as soon as they get that grown man bump, it's new. Yeah. They're not used to it. No, nah, that's real. It's that's so real. Oh, yeah. It's different. Tiny mentioned something that's so crazy, right? And you know, I I'll go back to what Coach said always says about our team right you can't name UConn starting five mm -hmm. and I go back to our team tiny not to rub it in your face John as I always do uh <laughs> but seriously no one can name our starting five I think if you had a we could put a million dollars on it if you ask dudes that we played against and, and you ask them yo what was our starting five who was on our starting five Probably no one could name them, you know. And and you know, look at a team like UConn, and uh, coaches are good coaches that's going to put together pieces and just instead of sticking players out there and go, do what you did at AAU. Yeah. Everybody go nut, go out there. We just going to run every every play and fast break, and let's see if we get a win. Look at look at the Kentucky game. Look at the kids who played well for Kentucky. It was the older dudes. It was the fifth year guy and the fourth year guy. That's sad. <clears throat> that's sad. That's sad for Kentucky to go down so early. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the NCAA basketball. But just think about this, Pooh. Uh huh. Think about this. Let's say I was starting five, right? Uh huh. Let's say. I was six man Fact. was getting two thousand dollars a week to play for us. Is he gonna go hard? He's not starting. He don't got to work hard in practice because he's still getting paid. Mm -hmm. So how's the competition in practice now? So now these guys are getting paid. Some of them getting paid. They're not even starters. So how's the competition in practice? Like I'm not trying to get hurt. I'm getting fifty thousand. So that's where this NIL stuff kills teams in the NCAA. And I don't people I don't people understand that. Like if, if you're the star player or if the starting five is getting a hundred thousand dollars to play basketball, how hard are they really gonna go to win the championship? I never even thought me, about that. The NIL should be okay, if you win a championship, you get a certain amount of money. If you win the uh the, the division, you get a certain amount of money. You shouldn't get no certain amount of money right out the door and expect these kids to go hard. And don't let it be a kid who's guaranteed an NBA player. No, I'm really not going to get hard. I'm not going hard. I ain't getting hurt. You give me my my, my 500000 but when I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a couple of me when I get to the NBA. I'm not going to get hurt. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it hurts basketball. It, it's going to trickle. It's trickling down to, to, uh, yeah. to hurt basketball. Mm -hmm. you, 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 see that, you see they got rid of that um, G Unite team, right? Yes. Because they, they should be a top of the conversation. No, hold they on, hold on. It, 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 hold on, slow down, slow down. Mm -hmm. That was it, it, it let everybody know what the hell y'all talking about now. Two years. The G Unite wow. team. They they put together a team for the so called you know NBA high school kids, where they'll take maybe three three or four of those kids and put them with other G League guys, but it's to develop them and prepare them for the draft. What's happening with the NIL? It, it doesn't make sense anymore because that's what's happening in college. So they got rid of they got rid of the team. They said it didn't make sense. But I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this though. A lot of these kids, the, the top level kids, they better go overseas or do something because if they plan on going to college, they're getting exposed, man. They're getting exposed. 
All those kids that won the draft board are off the draft board from last year's class. Mm. And you you playing against grown men. And you said you said earlier, John, you mentioned you was like, yo, yo, Pooh, don't you know that some of these college teams is older than some of the G League teams? Yes. The guy yes. the guy who beat Kentucky last night ended Tyler Hero's high school career. He's been in the NBA like three years. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know, yep. you know what? I'm not upset. I'm not I'm not mad at that. Because no, no. The reason why I'm saying I'm not mad at that is because you're 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 prolonging academics and basketball. Correct. Because when they play, they're still in school. You now these guys are coming out with master's degrees now. Mm -hmm. You know what? So put some, put more emphasis on that on academic mm -hmm. on, on on academics. You know, give a teacher more money. Give a coach <laughs> more money. Mm -hmm. You know, but get some incentives for a coach to make sure the kid is academically and athletically ready for the next level. Yeah, but Tiny, do you realize that you would just ruin the whole game if you based everything on academics and graduation, my friend? You yeah, realize you no coach is not up for that, <laughs> even though it actually makes perfect sense. Well, I mean, listen, it, it's, you know what? It's a treadmill right now. Everybody's running fast nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere. That's crazy. <laughs> yep. Let, let's go back for a minute, right? Um, I had a kid, you know, um, my neighborhood asked me a question last week and, you know, I wrote it on the board and he's talked about, uh, you know, Mr. Harding, you know, I, I, I'm trying to go viral, man. If I get one viral moment, I could capitalize off that. And, and, and I told him, I said, yo, you got the game backwards because I could show you a lot of kids who kind of went viral and these guys never really go nowhere. Not everyone, but the majority of them. But he was focused his whole young basketball career on one viral moment. That's the majority. Majority of these kids love the culture of it. They don't love the sport. They love the culture of it. I, I guarantee if you sat down half of these kids and asked, do you watch film? They probably tell you no, but they they saw highlights. They love the culture more than they love. Let me tell you something. There was more, and this is going back, but there were more kids playing EYBL last year that shouldn't have been playing. Why? Because because of the numbers, or because of the talent? Because of the sneakers they gave out, because of the leggings they gave out, those things. Tiny, come back in. You, I think you frozen. You got bounced back out. But that's that's real. Yeah, and 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 because it, it becomes if 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 I can't play where I could showcase me, what am I doing? What am I doing? It doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me. And 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 and, and it's sad because that it, this all you know affects what we're talking about. Kids don't know their level. Kids are doing things just because that's what's fashionable, you know. I, I going viral is fashionable. Oh, you, you saw that dunk, or you saw you you saw me drop him. It, it's it's backwards. It's completely backwards right now. When I used to put up my high school games, uh, I used to just put up the whole game, right? And I noticed that no one would watch them, mm -hmm. right? And you know, and then I had to kind of. They can only that. handle the clips, man. And show the, just the made baskets, right? I, not to and cut you off. Can I say? Not to yeah. cut you off. Look at highlight. How many people are showing defense? How many are showing the actual play? How, how you know, how the play started? And, and, and the funny thing, if you're trying to impress a college coach, you want to show those things. You want to show those things. You don't, most of these kids, they'll show it's just the basket, the basket, the basket. But you never see, okay, I'm I'm getting in somebody. I, I'm show me taking the charge. Show me getting a steal. They don't show those things. That's the yeah. viral piece. Yeah, I show I showed a block. If there's a block shot, if there's a steal, somebody got ripped, right? And mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, you know, say that I show the whole play, but I try to show how it started, right? Mm -hmm. I try to show the start, 
to the finished piece. Sometimes I may only caught the end piece, but if I have the whole piece, I will just show how it started to yeah. how it finished and then move on to the uh to the next play that that's going to end in, result in the basket. But it, it's just we just live in, in a microwave time right now that you know kids are getting a snapshot of everything that's coming fast. How how should a kid evaluate tape or evaluate a game or what should they be looking for? All right, so so check this out. It's funny because we use this as with football as well, right? Um, Glenn, you know, I, I coach football at, at yeah. Luha. And the first thing we tell we tell kids, and this is basketball as well, dude, do not put a film or a clip up there if you're playing against the little kid. Like, because the first thing I'm looking at is who you're playing against. You know, I see you getting all these layups, but I don't see a six nine guy back there, so that's not that's not going to translate. You, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so first and foremost, show if you're playing against competition where where it looks like you know you know they could keep up with the speed your speed or whatever that trend that looks good on film, but you can't stop putting up film where where you're doing what you want, you're doing what you want, and there's no resistance. You you. you Film. I'm looking at who you're playing against. It's a waste of time putting up Phil. If I, you know, we are, I, somebody sent me a video right um, the other day, and I guess they're trying to is a kid who's trying to transfer. Should I put my son in the, in the portal? And he said, John, give me your thoughts. But the first thing he, I, I, I started his video. I look at the score. They down forty. Mm. So that means I'm looking at hold up, garbage time. You playing in garbage time. Yeah. No, I'm not looking at the rest of this. And that's what that's what that's what people don't understand. There's little things you have to look at like that. That's important. Cuz it's hard right now. It's hard. So okay, if I'm a high school kid playing high school basketball, should I be playing my grade level or should I be playing up? You you know it's funny. I've seen more kids play down. And, and I feel bad for kids that, and, and and a lot of it has to do with, you know, parents not really understand it. There are more kids playing down than ever. You, you, you'll have a kid who's a, who's a senior that never played 17U. That, to me, that is backwards. That tells me a lot about the program that you're playing for. If, mm -hmm. if I got a program that's, they have me playing and and there's no intentions on where I'm situated for say a prep school or reclass, and you still have me playing sixteens. Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? It's backwards. It's 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 actually backwards. You know, and and I tell people all the time, even if you reclass, have a plan, still play your grade. Don't don't allow a program to use you because most of them they're using you. They're using you because he, he, they benefit of you playing down for the program. Uh, uh. Let me play. Let me play my grade because they don't care your age. We we we're looking at that on um in college. They don't care how old you are. Mm. Can you can you help us? It's an old game. Play your grade, and that'll that'll tell you a lot about the program. If if you tell them no nope, no nope, we want to play our grade, that'll tell you how much they they're really invested in you. Yeah, especially if you want to play up, my God. Yep, and it and it's and it's and it's sad. It's that happen. It happens a lot. So, man, that's that's crazy. When we talk about these uh, AAU programs, right? We talk about the AAU programs and how important they are. We mentioned the grade level. Um, what is the most important year in your high school career, right? Is it your sophomore year? Is it your junior year? What 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 year is your most important year? I posted some. I reposted something on my page right earlier today. Um, a USA basketball ball guy was talking about um, eighth, ninth, tenth grade. How most coaches don't care about that, and, and I agree a thousand percent. This is all about seventeens. You, mm. you you hear a lot. You you see kids playing on three different teams from 15, 16, then 17s. They can't get they can't get on a team. This is about 17. You want to get the 17s as soon as possible. 
Think about yo, Glenn. Did we have we have sixteen seventeens when we played? <laughs> no, and, 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 and and tiny, tiny. No. That's what I. That's what I loved about Doc. Doc let us. We we played up. Facts. We Facts. played up. It was no sixteens, seven, fifteen, sixteen, because seventeens is is nineteen U anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we got a program. Listen, we got a program around Coyana neighborhood called the Flames, right? And the Flames is one of those programs that everybody could join up. Mm -hmm. So I went down one time after playing with uh with Lloyd Daniels and uh Sincere. Um, <laughs> I went down there and uh the guy was like, How old are you? I don't know, maybe 13 years old. He was like, oh, you gotta play 13 under. I said, No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing 15, I'm out of here. So I, you know, I left, you know, so. But it's a different era. We can't go back in the days. Like I said, it's bad basketball. There's a lot of money in bad basketball. We all know that. It's a lot, a lot of money in bad basketball. And a lot of people getting rich off it. No matter what we say, what we do, the kid that want to get the views pool, he might be doing the right thing. You know what? He might be a, a YouTuber. Who knows? He might be using basketball to be a YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? No, but I, I asked him. I, be a YouTuber. I was like, yo, but he's, no. That he was one, he wanted to get a viral moment that capitalized to bring some attention to himself. And then he'll focus on being good, right? Just that one viral moment. Got it backwards. I don't well, know. Again, right, it, right. It may it may work to his advantage. Yes, I don't know. This is a, this is the era of bad basketball. It's the era of of the skill. It's not about the skills. It's not about how well you play. It's how well you play the game. Mm -hmm. Sad thing about it. And, and the funny thing is, these kids that we were nowhere near skilled as these kids that early. These kids early. Oh my god. I had, I had, a, I had a, a, a argue with my buddy the other day. I told him, I said, I said, the difference, I said, the difference is, I said, nowadays, I said, the kids are more skilled. We we had to learn resilience and toughness before we got the skill part. Yeah. Mm hmm But these kids are super skilled, man. Super skilled. McDonald's All-American. How important it is for your career to become a McDonald's All American, and is it guaranteed startup in college and the NBA? In the NBA, it did. It almost guaranteed back in the days. Yeah, not now. Not now. It almost it, it was definitely a, a level where you know high school kids could say, okay, you know, or or NBA guys can evaluate. You know the best against the best, but now I, I you know, I, I don't know. Especially when you know these these teams are uh, paying kids to play, and they're not allowed to play in those games anymore. But it's a different era. It's a different era. Yeah, more more in the portal than the NBA, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, because those same kids got to compete against the old guys once they get up there. You saw that with the Kentucky game. It's not a guarantee. Those and all those kids were McDonald's All Americans. I want to see. What happens era, do you think that era is kind of over, where young guys can kind of come in and win it right away? I think so. Are you talking about college or, or, or NBA? College. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I really think that uh, there's no more Fat Fives. It's got to be a mix. It got to be a mix. You know, for for a lot of reasons, no more fat five. I mean, the budget is not there for fat. <laughs> yeah. The budget, the budget for a fat five right now would be an NBA budget. Mm -hmm. Right, so, because of the NIL they could legally pay them, right? Yeah. So it would be, and it would be crazy. Kentucky might have the second and third pick in the draft coming off the bench. But the only good thing about a fat five, uh, uh, Brian, is that you might have them for three or four years. Because that money is too good. Yeah. Yeah. True. A, a lot of them should think about that. I was about to I, say that, John. I, I can make my money stand right here. And and that's why they're staying so yes. long. If I was a coach in the AAU scene right now, I would get three or four good players 
and I would help a college out and almost try to guarantee them three or four, two to three years. Mm -hmm. Now, these colleges right have enough leeway, Tiny, for that. Excuse me? With the East. I'm just saying, back in the day, there was a team, there was, there was school yeah. called, it, it, it was programs called Riverside Church and Gauchos. Riverside Church helped St. John's University. Mm. Yes. Facts. Okay. And, and you know, a lot of those guys stayed four years. If I was a good AU program, I would invest in that because it helps the kids out. Mm -hmm. and, to send a kid all over the country makes no sense because they're going to go all over the country after one or two years. So get to, if you got a good AU program, the chemistry is good, you should be helping out a college. A college I love if I, I love if, I, if a college looked at it like that. It's just every every program I talk to is like, we'll take one college, we'll take one high school kid, yes. and four portal kids. You know, no one's even investing in in two, maybe even three. You know, I haven't heard any programs really even talk about. If that. I was LIU, I, I would think like that. I would think like that because mm -hmm. no one's looking at you to win an NCAA championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? You should go invest into – and that's the problem, Brian, because when I was coaching, the shoe company invested into the neighborhoods. Yeah. Mm. And it helped me keep kids eating. Yep. A lot of these kids didn't eat every night. Yeah. Now if there's no one investing back into the neighborhoods. That's why basketball in New York City is terrible to me on the grassroots side because there's no one – there's no chief. There's no one helping out the, the, uh, the neighborhoods. Everyone is all over trying to, you know, keep the Everything AU program. Does. And the AU program is not that important anymore because the kid going to go to your AU program for four or five years and get and go to Division Three or Division Two. That's the reality of it. No, nobody's telling the truth because there's a lot of good money and bad basketball. There's yeah. a lot of money and bad basketball. And like Mr. Arnold said, some of them don't even stay with the same program for more than a year. They go from – Program to program to program, and it's like, yep. you know, the kids don't even invest in making the in the time and the place. So it's hard, but I, I love that. I love that mentality, Tiny. I, I would sign up for that, beat, and I think programs should do exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, we got we got a bunch of schools that should be doing that. Wagner, mm -hmm. LIU, yeah, Astra, Fordham, all these schools. You adopt a program. I know yep. legally you can't do that. But show some interest in some of these coaches that's, that's coaching kids, and maybe they, they show some interest in, in, in your program. In, in your, and with um, real? Yes. It used to be like back in the days. Come on, be for real. Let's be real. No, I was about to say that. River, the Riverside coaches benefited from St. John's. Yes. A few of them moved up there. Yes. Thurm, Alex. Yes. No they secret. were on that St. John's bench. Yes. Riverside coaches. Yeah, I mean, listen, when, when Mr. Lawson was sending his boys to Memphis, he went up to Memphis, right? <laughs> so, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, I guess, as long as you're you're giving uh, enough, uh, you know, value back to the program. Listen, we have, you know, some great basketball minds on this show tonight. Uh, appreciate you, Eagle Academy, uh, Harlem. Basketball coach, uh, I think that's my guy Scooter. If not, anybody else that's down with Eagle, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, this is a very important. My guy CK from um, up in the upstate area. We're gonna bring him on because he's a very knowledgeable guy. What's going on upstate, right? Because a lot of times we focus on what's going on down here. He's out connect to what's going on upstate, and he has a very important question. He says, "How much does European influence?" In the NBA player part in this, you want you want me to answer that? Go ahead, you go first, Sonny. It's it's a huge influence. Come on, be for real. Everything. It's money. The more we connect from out, you know, outside uh, uh, different countries, the more money NBA gets. That makes sense to me. That part makes sense, right? We got to catch up. Before it used to be everybody's got to catch up to us. Now we gotta catch up to what's going on in, in you know overseas. And yeah. what's going on is they 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 focusing on youth programs that develop kids. Plain and simple. That kid from Dallas, and I don't like his game, to be honest, because he holds the ball too much. And Luca, <laughs> what he did overseas, he mastered it. 
like 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 the Iverson mastered his game, and they yep. mastered his game. He mastered his game. And he didn't do it in nobody college. He was the McDonald American. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And now he's probably going to be one of the best NBA players ever. So we got to catch so up crazy. overseas. Yeah. And, and I, I agree with Tiny. I agree with him a, hundred, a thousand percent. And, and those those kids are going to basketball uh, academies. It's just it's just basketball. So they, they may spend an hour in the classroom, the other seven, you know, working on crafting their skill. Or they may be doing something else like like uh, a, a, a vocation that we used to have in our schools. It took away a lot of vocational situation, right? Focus on, on, on colleges. And now this college basketball and this college is not even sexy anymore. We should still, we should be going back to the vocational situation in high schools. No, nah, that's yeah. real. You know, it's crazy. We have a, a, a New York City great, uh, Sam Graham. He's over in the Netherlands. Sam Graham is a huge star over there. Um, he played at Cardinal Hayes High School and he starred at St. Bonavis. He played with Elmer yep. Anderson. Mm -hmm. And he's running, uh, he has a camera over there. And, man, it's huge over there. And he always talk about, you know, pool, man, we should bring some of these guys from New York overseas so they can get the experience of what we do over here and maybe it could translate to what's going on back home because he wants to help out like that. Um, That'd be nice. I'll, I'll be down for that. Bet I'm I'm gonna definitely make that connection, Tiny. Sam Graham's a good guy. Yeah. Um, always stays in contact and he's always inviting me. He's like, yo, Pooh, you gotta come to your show out in the Netherlands. You gotta just come and see what we're doing. <laughs> and he'd be sending me videos and sending me things of what they're doing. And man, his program is really huge. And he was a he was a star, so they you know kind of catered to what, what he needs. Now, with 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 saying what's going on and and the whole overseas area compared to what's going on over here. How can we move forward? What can we do to catch up to what the rest of the world is already doing? I don't know. It's tough. I, I you know, I, I don't, we, we don't have the same requirements. Like, you know, our kids got to go to school, you know, and, you know, probably o over there, the parents are probably not hands on the way it is here. That, that's tough, man. That's tough, and, and those kids are probably handpicked in most of those most of those academies. I mean, so, I, I, I don't, don't have enough, enough experience on what goes on overseas. Even though I coached about thirty players that played overseas, <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I just think you know, I, I, obviously, the NBA is still the, the number one sport, and it's in our country, basically, when it comes to basketball. So we still have the platform. I just think that we need to, uh, you know, you know, focus on the fundamentals, not just the, the player. Uh, you know, it's, 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 the, it's, it's the adults, it's the mentors, you know. Growing up as a basketball player, I didn't follow kids. I didn't follow my friend. I watched the guy, I watched Pearl Washington. I watched one of the yeah. best players that ever came out of, yeah. you know, come out of New York City. Who's these guys watching? The best player in New York City right now might be from Westchester. His name is Boogie Flynn. Facts. So who are these guys watching? When I came out, I can, I can go see Mark Jackson play, Pearl, Carlton Screen, uh, 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 Kenny. Paco. Paco. I played play with Kenny Anderson. Like, I played with the, 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 and watched the, the best players in the history of New York City. Who's these guys watching now? Who are these guys playing watch? Do they even watch basketball? Yeah, there's no role models, and you know, so it's it's totally different. What what makes Boogie Flan so special? You guys yeah, got to see him play. I I watched him since since you know since eight years old. I you know he's always he's always been good, and what what I like now more than ever his confidence is on a thousand. Always, always was able to shoot it, and always was a nice kid. Somebody say he's from the Bronx. Kids. Well, he huh? plays in Westchester. Somebody say he's from the Bronx. and plays in Westchester. So, hey, Pooh, tell that person. Everybody who played for Lincoln, they think they, they think they're from Coney Island. So, 
My fault. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, cause, right, right. That's so true. That's well, true. You know what, to me, he got it from everywhere. To me, the reason why Boogie is different right now is a couple of reasons. It's not his fault, though. It's not his fault that the competition, the competition is not on his level. Mm. Right. And that's why he's special. Because our competition is not on his level. You know, I watched him play many of times. If he was in a different situation, he would probably average 40. But he doesn't have to average 40. You know, I wish he would. I wish he, I wish he had to because it's only going to help him next level. The fact that he doesn't have to go hard to do what he got to do to win, it might hurt him on the next level. Yeah. And, That's and, the and, only thing. If it was me and I was coaching him, I would have somebody in practice pushing him, pushing him, dogging him out. Yep, yep, Just to yep. get him ready for the next level. Some games he seemed bored. Like he not yes. even yeah. – some games I watch him, it just seemed like, ah, these guys not even good enough. And I'm not even going to try to get myself hurt playing against these guys. It, Unlike it, when he played against Christy King, you saw he just took over, yeah. right? And he scored those, uh, you know, 38, 40 points that he scored. It, it, it just seemed crazy. Tiny, a lot of these coaches don't think like that. Like, I, I, I think that's huge for what you just said. I had that one guy in practice beating him up, beating him up. And we always had that in our practices. Like, I don't care how good you thought you were. Mm -hmm. You had to go against your, your boys, you know. And, and, and you know you got one – you always got one of those on the team. Yeah, you got to have a thug. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> it is what it Explain is. that. Explain it, that because you – you all, I, Tiny, that's something that you always – especially with me and you together, we talk, and you'd be like, yo, this guy doesn't have one guy on his team you need, that yeah. – You need a guy, right? That's going to say, what's the kid uh, I love that played? That, that's always in somebody's face in the NBA. Come on. The guard. Beverly. Patrick, about, uh, Beverly. Patrick Beverly. Patrick, yes, Patrick, yes, Patrick, yes, yes, yes. You need one of those. Every, you need a football guy. guy. You need a football guy, Tiny. <laughs> you know, a football guy. A guy that's, that, that's willing just to take hits. But you always need somebody, especially when you think you're a real coach and it's seven seconds to go and you can't run your play that you love to run. And this guy got to get a shot off. That's the guy you need in practice to go against your best player yep. to help you get a shot off. Because we can't coach every second of the game. Mm -hmm. and, and, and But that kid, they, they don't play that kid. These coaches That's don't sad. play that kid. That's sad. That's sad. I had, I, had, I, had a, I had a few of those guys. I had a few of those glue guys. That's what they call them now, glue guys. Yeah. <laughs> or dogs, right? So you need them dogs, the one that's gonna, you know, uh, rev things up when, when those guys, you know, get yeah, so. You need an Alvarado, man. You need an Alvarado. Alvarado, Alvarado mm -hmm. was great. Alvarado. Now, uh, how did he? Now I'm not surprised, right? But how does a guy like that become so significant on a pro basketball team when he wasn't? Was he McDonald's All American? No, no. Was he Mr. Basketball? No, I don't think so. He, he should have been. He was tough. He was always tough. Yeah. And he had a goal, too. And he was from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little tough. He was a little tough, he was right? Tough. Brooklyn guy. My son. That was my Brooklyn guy. You know, it, it's, you know what? I, I, had, I had a lot of, a few good players that played for Christ the King High School. You know? And, and... Throughout the years, Crested King had a had some dogs. Oh yeah, a lot of a lot of people in Brooklyn, you know, Omar Cooks, Eric Barkley's, you know, but they had some dogs. Always had some dogs. I always admired the way Crested King could uh, attract players. <laughs> you know, I always admired that. But I also knew the system. I also knew Riverside. You go from Riverside to Christ the King. To St. John's, it is what it is. Before that was before that it was talent time. Yes, but what's wrong with that though? Nothing wrong with that. It was pretty successful for a long yes. time. Yes. Yep. Yo, Ron McCann said, "What up?" He said, "Big Ron from the Sonics." What up, John? Listen, <laughs> yo, John Johnson, who played at Talenton. John Johnson. He's from Brooklyn. Yes. 
He said he didn't even visit Virginia. Lloyd told him that's where he was going, and that's where he went. Wow. He said he's supposed to visit Hawaii. He's a physical, he didn't go on any other visits. That was it. Well, well, we talked about that tiny, right? The, the AU program being connected somehow to these college universities, right? I, I don't, listen, I think these conversations are going to be some of the most important conversations on High School Basketball Weekly because I think kids are going to start getting information. Coaches are going to start getting information. They're going to have to kind of click on here and listen to you guys who I call you guys uh, the experts of the basketball scene because Tiny and I talk all the time. John, we talk all the time. Basketball, we talk strategy. We talk, you know, different situations, uh, kids, and and this the, the future of basketball and, and all the things that need to go on and how important it is. Uh, and for you guys to come on and do this, this is, this is so important to the culture right here. Yeah, we can interview kids. Yeah, you know, it's good to get guys' stories and, and what they've been through in trials and tribulations. But to get it in real time, I think it's so important, right, to the culture and what's going on right now because this has been a crazy week, fellas. This has been a crazy two weeks. And I think we need to start kicking this information uh, for the masses so they kind of get what's going on. Um Anderson Diaz, how bright does this future look? From St. Ray's, for those who I know saw exactly what I'm giving John a chance. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I, already told, I already told you. I already told you. But I think that kid is good, man. I think he's good. And I like the fact that they, you know, they're giving him that opportunity early. That kid is going to be good, man. Yeah, I, I mean, that's probably – he's so good. He's one of the kids that I said, oh, nah, he's not his right age. Yeah. The kid's that good, you start saying, oh, he's too old. You know, when Lance was a freshman, they say he was 20. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so, and I had Lance in, when he was in fifth grade. He was in my class. So so when kids when your kids got talent and they play, like, you know, above their, their age, that kid got talent. And not only has talent, he has the IQ. Mm-hmm. That's a little and, bit higher than, than certain, certain players. And his people would be crazy if they. I don't care who he plays for. You should be. He should be playing seventeen. Seventeen. Mm. Seventeen. He should not be playing yep. up until seventeen. Yeah. If yeah. if they mention fifteen, that that family should run like your yes. uh-uh. But he suppose they say they want to give. I want him to be the best sixteen year old in the country. That shit don't mean nothing. I mean, With the way the game is, uh uh-uh. uh. It's about 17s. It, it's it's that only benefiting the program. That kid should be playing 17s. Definitely. Is he at, think about this? Is he as good as Cole? Because I watched Cole his freshman year. Cole struggled in um EYBL 17s his freshman year. Struggled. That kid should be playing 17s. Cole developed playing 17s. Definitely make him better. I- I coached I coached personally three McDonald's All Americans. If one of them would have came to me after their freshman year and saying they didn't say they was playing 15 or 16, you know what? I probably told them to transfer. Yeah. I can't coach you uh, if you're playing uh, 15 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Because then that means you're gonna go somewhere, you're gonna chuck up all the shots and come back to me, bad basketball. Yep. And not better. Not mm-hmm. better at all. Yep, take your bumps. Get get used to the physicality early. If that kid can't. That kid shouldn't be playing 15s. That's what I'm hearing. He's playing 15s. It's crazy. Wow. 15 where? I I heard he was playing. Okay, okay. And I heard he was playing 17. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I did hear he was playing 17s. I hope so. He played. He played. That kid played 17s last year. With, with, yeah. So why would he go Kitty backwards? Set? I think he left. I think he's not playing with Kenny Set. If I'm well, not hold on. And, and this is my thing, too. This is my thing. And I mean this. Why would you leave a good thing? Again, it, again, it's the again, it's the EYBL. But then they gotta pay us all. Like, hey, listen. What? Listen, you see Kenny sat there at all the games. 
he's the one really coaching from the sideline, make sure that kid stays on point and doing what he needs to do. No, that's the kid. Kenny Sat developed him. Wow. That's Kenny Sat's kid. That's the reason why he's so good. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Wow. The they said, they said 15s with Renz, I think. Yo. He's bugging. He's bugging. Some, some, now are they you, doing it for the program? This this got to be for the program. But, but, but Glenn, I always tell you, sometimes you got to step away from that. You got to step away from that. And 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 and, and you know what? Because at the end of the day, 17s is the only thing that matters. 15, look at look what I posted on my, on my page. 16, 15, 16, they don't care about that shit. This is about 17s. Put, I'm going to give you an example, right? Um, I got a phone call. And I'm not gonna tell you which coach, but he right. he was calling me, asking me about a kid. And and the one thing one thing he said to me, he said he said, John, we don't know who's staying, we don't know who's leaving, so we don't have time to even deal with a 2024 year kid, 2024, which is a senior now. We got to figure out who's staying, who's leaving. That's what he said to me. So that being said, a kid like like. The, the kid at the freshman, why not have fun on 17 for three years? Thousand percent. Thousand percent. Why not say, oh, he's he's number one in, in, in Alabama and he's a senior? That would that would put that kid confidence so high. Next year at St. Raymond's, it will be sky's the limit for him. He, oh. might, he might even do two years in the 17 signing and say, you know what? I want to go to school early, right? Then he's then he's in the program at 18 years old, ready to go with two years at 17 and the 17s. Yeah, yep, the man. programs are different back than back in the days. Yeah, yeah. It's wired differently. And yep. I, I'm trying to figure out why. Obsessed like, with winning. I, I, I'm it's confusing. And, and that kid family, if anyone says, Well, guess what? We're not gonna play yourself. But you know what? Well, then it's not the place for me. I'm going to play 17. Even if it's hoop group, I'm going to play 17s. Cause it's 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 different. Cause it's older kids. I don't. You, I don't care how good these kids may think they are or how good they are. When you playing against a, a 15, 16 year old, is different from playing against a 19, 18 year old. The physicality is different. Those eight points. Those eight points in that seventeen you game is is so big. Yes, it's different. Okay. Eight, definitely, hey, hey, Glenn, definitely now when you got all the high school seniors playing, playing, playing AAU again. Yo, did you hear that, Tiny? What? A lot of the high school seniors are going back to play AAU because they need looks. Is it because of the – now, let me ask this question. Are, are they allowed to because of their age? Suppose. As long as they're going to 2025 in a prep school, right? Uh, no, so, oh. so, so, right. Supposedly, if if you're not re, if you're not prepping, you could play the first live period. Remember, they pushed it back though. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's always been that's always been the rule. Right, right. But during the summer, you could rule. play, but you still see kids going out. But yeah, you, you got you everybody. You got everybody that's trying to um find yes. a prep school. And, and by the way, it's really late, fellas. If you're trying to find a prep school right now, it's really the money has been spent. I can do a prep school. <laughs> you can do class online, mm -hmm. work out yep. in, 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 in a fitness club, and let's go on the road. Yep. Wow. Serious? That's the prep school. Yep. So that kid should be playing 17s. That, I think that kid is that good. Think about it. The Catholic League, even it, it's funny, even even the the, the, the knapsack, that's 17 you. Play 17s. Play 17s. All right, last segment, fellas. Last segment. This look, this, this is so good. I don't want to go nowhere. This is this has been look. You people, guys are the best. Man, this is this is really awesome. All right. Who are some of the best guards right now in the NBA? And do y'all have any idea how good they were in high school? Best guards? Like, I like I could tell you one, right? Let me give you an example, right? John Morant. I remember I Tiny. Yes, I remember. Remember Jaheim was on your team, right? Jaheim went out with an AU team on a Adidas circuit. 
and this one Zion Williams was, you know, he was uh in high school. Yeah. And I was watching the teams online, right? And watching Zion's games. I had no idea John Morant was on this team. Yeah, he played with them, I was gonna say. But I had no clue. I'm watching the game. He didn't stick out like a sore thumb, like, oh, yo, this guard is. No offers. Guard. He had no offers, Phil. This guard is a woo. Because I was so focused on Zion. And mind you, I'm watching the other kids, too, hoping somebody else stick out. But I'm just like, uh, everybody else is all right. But Zion is just so far better than everybody else. And then, boom, John Morant. Right? Do you look at uh, Damian Lillard, right? You know. Steph Curry, his dad was an NBA player, but he wasn't projected to be a star. What is it, you know, uh, McCullum, all those dudes? What's the guy that played for Indiana? Halliburton. Was he was he McDonald All American? No, he wasn't even a top ten pick. What is it about those guys compared to a lot of those guys that come out that's like super All American and? Have all this viral sensation and no, all this attention. Oh, you cannot steal this from me, bro. You cannot steal this from me. They had less bad advice people around them, bro. <laughs> they wasn't part of the bad advice crew. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I, I'm going to give you some publishing on that, Tiny, because I'm yeah, definitely going to yeah. be using that. The we bad advice, see. the we bad advice crew. Tiny, we got it. We, but seriously. To answer that question, I say it to a lot of people all the time. If you go down a list of the top 10 NBA players, you don't come from big-time programs anymore. You really don't. You, you, I mean, it's half overseas and maybe half mid-majors mid right now. Yeah. And Whitehead was going to college, right? And we was in Vegas working out. And I forgot who I was talking to. There was a guy who was an All-American who went to a mid-major school. And I asked him, I said, why did you go to mid-major school? And he told me, and he actually played with um, James Harden. And he was like, one of the reasons why, you know, James and I decided to go to mid-majors because we want to work on our skill. Mm. We didn't want to go somewhere where every position was already filled with an All-American. Mm -hmm. We wanted to get double teamed. We wanted to work on our weaknesses. And a lot of those kids that you, a lot of those players you named, at some point in their time, they had to work on their weaknesses. They had to do things. They had to be uncomfortable in the game of basketball. A lot of these kids don't want to be uncomfortable. A lot of these coaches don't know how to make them uncomfortable. Yep. They're happy with what they give them, and, it, and they, they accept it. You know, I go watch, I go watch. This is one of the reasons why, you know, I have to get back into coaching. I go watch these guys play. And I, I watch these games, and we all do it. We all say, well, you know what? They're not as good as this era. I'm not talking about era. I'm talking about what I see today. It doesn't matter the era. If you can't go left, that's a problem. If you only shoot jump shots, that's an issue. If you're not playing defense to the best of your ability. Major issue. You was missed coach. You was missed in form. Yeah. Plain and simple. In this game. So those kids that you name, those players, they all have a specialty because they worked on their specialty, but they also worked on their weaknesses. You know, so I mean that's the only thing the way I see it with those kids. And, those and, kids. and also, and also opportunity. John Morant goes to Duke. He's not John Morant. That that margin of error is small. You know, you look at John Morant for his freshman year, you know, he struggled at some points. But the fact that he's at Murray State, he's allowed to play through his mistakes. So now you could develop, you could get better. It's hard developing. You can't, it's hard, it's gonna be hard to develop at Kentucky. It's hard to develop at that high level. Go where you're gonna, you're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna be appreciated and you could play through your mistakes. It's opportunity. And all of those guys, that's what they have. Opportunity. And it's not a blueprint. There's not a blueprint to this. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody thinks it's a blueprint. Everybody, go to this school, go to that school, and, you know, it's going to work out for you. The blueprint is hard work. Hard work, repetition. And have fun. Mm -hmm. the, the, the day you 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 upset because somebody 
you know, coach you the wrong way or coach you differently, you're not having fun anymore. Mm -hmm. All right, last question for real. Uh, what, what, what advice would you give Jakar Sanders, who now um, has to just re, you know, he had to decommit from Sienna, who just decommitted from Sienna because the coach uh, was fired? I, I, I seen I seen Jakai when he was probably I don't know maybe the sixth seventh grade. Same here, same here. You know, I mean his his improvement has been amazing. Um, every time I see him, I keep asking, you know, what school is he going to? Like who's looking at him? I mean his his physical abilities is is is, is D one level definitely. You know, his, his, a kid like him. Will probably be out of school for four years, you know. And I think he would just, you know, I think he's a coach's dream from the outside looking in. I, I didn't coach him, but you know, I'm assuming that he'll do anything he have to do on the basketball court to stay on the basketball court. So I don't understand why you know LIU didn't didn't uh, unless he doesn't want to go to LIU. The reason why I'm saying LIU is because that's down the block for me. Mm -hmm. There's other local schools that should be, um, you know, definitely. Emailing them or texting them right now. Yeah, I I think I think Jakai. I watched him as well. Um, we put you know we played against him since he was little. I think he'd be fine. Um, not to let the cat out of the bag, but there you know a few people call me already uh, about him, and I think I think I think they'll get in touch with. Him. And it's that's his level. It's that Sienna level. So he'll be fine. I think he's gonna be fine. Man, listen. I know it's getting late. I know you guys got things to do. Um, Cause I look, you know, look. This I'm getting. I, I'm good on energy, man. And you know, uh, for a lot of things that people said on Instagram and uh, here on the chat, uh, and I know I'm getting my phone keeps going off. People are texting a lot of good information, saying, "Yo, this is a great show. This is needed. Uh, New York City needed this." Um, I think this is something that we can do, uh, maybe you know, once a month. Every every now and again, you you guys got something y'all want to talk about? Cause I'm gonna be hitting both of you guys. Like, I hit John. I was like, yo, you gotta come on tonight. We 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 gotta talk about this important information. And always been talking to Tiny um, about things. Um, it says need that pipeline. Those D one local schools. Carl Beckett, Lee Green, Carlos Easterland, Plenty now. Uh, Lois, Jalen Lewis, uh, Bob Brothers, Navik, uh, Ashton Reynolds. Um, yeah, I was just talking about him today as well. Uh, Ashton Reynolds and him not even uh, receiving uh, D2 offer. Uh, That's crazy. That's crazy. D1 offer. He has. Have you ever seen him play Tiny? Who's that? Uh, Ashton Reynolds. From Thanks a lot, Marcel. He goes to Transit Tech. Oh, the kid that jumps out of the gym? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've seen him play. I've seen him play. I just don't know. I don't I don't know <laughs> if in practice he was forced to bring the ball up the court. Yeah, yeah. This year they put the ball in his hands, but I, still, I, I think oh, he, he, oh. he believes it. I, yeah. I don't think you heard me. Okay. Because once you're that athletic, your, your competitions might be scared of you. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. I don't know in practice was he forced – Oh, I got bring you. The ball up the court. Got you. Yeah, he's gonna be forced in the college practice. Got you. Got yes, you. I'm not sure. I'm got not sure what position he, he, he can play in college. When, when you watch him, it's obvious. You know. You know. They should have been stressing him about his left hand. Yeah. For sure. Well, listen. Um, you know, again, I've been getting a lot of calls uh, about him. Um, I told you know, John. Um. He he, you know he needs to go out and with, with Crown and and see what it you know what he can do, um, and we got some people working behind the scenes to kind of help him out, and that's what we want to do. You know those good kids that we know that's going to work hard, and I think eventually, like later on, if he gets to a a, a nice D two program, right? Because you know I, I'm gonna be realistic about his situation, and it's not no surprise. But I think he can become a real superstar on that level 
and then maybe bounce somewhere and go somewhere where he's, you know, can really show his talent on, on a grand stage. But, you know, having that kind of athleticism um, and his work ethic, this guy, he he plays defense, dives to lose ball, and he plays hard, right? We talk about the dog tiny. He always want to hold the best player. You know, sometimes he would give himself a foul so because he plays so hard. He don't, right? So you want a kid like that that want to go hard every possession and, and go all out every play. So there's a lot of good kids like that. Next week, I will be dropping my top 10 players of the year, Catholic school, PSEL, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. It's going to be a lot of people upset. It's going to be a lot of people happy. But I'm not Whoa. here to please the masses. We got a good game on Sunday. We got Ja'Kai against uh, Boogie, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it should be a good game. Hopefully, it's, it's not a repeat of what we saw the first time. Mm -hmm. they, didn't play, they didn't play. They didn't play. They didn't play this year. Yeah, they yeah. did. They did. They did. If y'all, y'all, if y'all would end off talking about that, we can. I would. <laughs> I yeah, would I tell y'all. They ain't got no, no, not the issue. We talk about them getting. It was bad. Got, it was oh, yeah. bad. As my friends yeah, and I, I was up there. I, I, I went all the I went all the way to Westchester to watch. Watched that game and it was a terrible crowd. So I, I, I was upset with that. Correct. I was really upset. Yeah, it definitely wasn't promoted well, but they they no, got they got smacked. They put they their hands. On. They put their hands on. Bad. Bad. Oh wow! And, and they had their full team. Everybody was full stacks. Nobody was hurt. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it might they, have been a forty piece. Yeah. So I, I'm hopefully that uh, Coach Hamilton and those guys prepared them for Sundays. Uh, matchup, and you know they could give Brooklyn. Um, it's gonna be in Brooklyn this time. Game. Yeah, it's gonna be a Brooklyn time. A better crowd, different energy. So you're right, Tidy. We may see a different game, different energy. I, was, I, I wonder if this is the first time Boogie playing in Brooklyn. Hmm. I wonder. Yeah. He might get the yeah. crowd that he, that that they that, that, that he needs. Hey, Tidy, can I ask you one question? And. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I could ask you this because I know you know that I handle a player that big. What would you do if you were in charge of Boogie's camp and Coach Calipari left to tonight? If he if he leaves, Calipari? Yep. yep. So, you know what? The things I say, people believe it, and, and they, 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 they take it to the heart, right? <laughs> this so, is a hypothetical, people. A hypothetical, please. Come on. I'm going to I'm I'm going to Seton Hall. I should have known that was coming, Pooh. I should have known. I'm that. going to Seton Hall. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere where the coach played my position at the highest level. Mm. I would have said St. John's, but I don't know if St. John's got room for him. But I'm coming to. I'm standing. I'm standing in my area. Man, I can't argue that. Shot. Shot. Shot's family. Can't argue that. Nah, that's real. Salute to Shaim Holloway. I, you know. I know this is a side note, but I would love to have seen, uh, and it's not taking any shot to any team, but I always told Bud this, I would love to see the guards and the pressure of Jefferson that press all the time go up against Boogie and see how will he fear against that. And the constant scoring, right? The constant scoring that's going to match up with, because Eagle plays a different game. Right, and it's not to sidetrack what they talk, what they're going to do on Sunday, but I just, I, it never happened. Even when Jefferson scrimmaged them, Boogie didn't play. So I would just love to see that matchup because I don't see, I never saw stepping that get pressured as much. Him right, they've always been allowed to bring up the ball, see the court, and kind of you know designate where they wanted to go. I got a question about about Kentucky. Because I, I I didn't watch the game, so how did the kid Wagner do? <laughs> I can't hear you, fool. <laughs> Seriously, I can't I, hear all you. right, I'm a, I'm gonna respond. I'm gonna respond. I think he had as many points as me and Pooh. Again, a a a, a, a tiny. I think it's a water break. I'm taking a water break out. You, you saw. You saw that. You saw that grown man, older kid. You you saw that. You saw that yesterday. Oh, he played I, well. 
Nah, he, he I don't know. It, it it was weird. It looked like Calipari started him him and the other kid. I don't know what that is. Like like because the the other the other two the white kid Shepherd Shepherd and what's the other the the Dillingham kid. I, I was I was shocked that they didn't start. No, they never start. Uh, it's, oh, it's, Wagner didn't start. No, no, Wagner, no, Wagner started, oh, but yeah, those Wagner two started, yeah. it looked different when Shepard and Dillon was in the game. Yeah, and we can't go go on and start blaming Calipari because he's been a great coach. He's been oh, having this platform for for all for a lot of us become rich, and that's his platform. If you want to do a one and done, you come see me. It's no secret. Yeah, but. Yeah. It comes there's at a, a price. Chance. It comes with a price. No, there's a chance that you might not really be a one and done. Right, and don't right, blame right. him. And That's don't blame what I'm saying. Him. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I think he does a hell of a job with, with those yes, guys. Yes, he does a um, Yes, yes. He's one of the best out there with what he do. Yeah. But, like, you know, sometimes people the timing watching. is right. Timing could be off. The team could be off. You know, something off the court might be the issue. Only real coaches who, who coach – Certain players will understand that, you know. From the guys that's that's just as fans don't understand it and is looking from the outside, they always got something else to say about it. But you know, so that being said, this kid Wagner was all American, so on and so on, and he didn't have the year that he went to have. Yeah. So it's not really the school all the time. To me, the best fit is your personality with the coach's personality, mm -hmm. and that's the only way. It that's the best. Sometimes the best way it works. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't really know these kids' personality because I haven't really coached them. But you know, if they're not connecting dots with the personalities, and it's all and it's all about the other stuff. Then it's, it's gonna take a hard time to work. Yeah, and I, I think it becomes it's about styles as well. Yeah, Milwaukee Bucks. It, it's it's styles as well. You, you, I I just think those kids should have they should have just went either went to you know went already to the NBA went overseas. Because, Tiny, you know this, college basketball, it's a team game. It's a team defense game. You're not going to get off the way you would get off possibly in the NBA. It's, the court is not open like that. And the NBA so knows I, that. And the NBA knows that. So if the kid yep. gets drafted and he's on the team, the NBA knows that it's a different yep. game. And, and think about this. They got the Dillingham and the Shepard kid projected first round lottery. Top five. Second and third pick. And they didn't even right? start. They didn't even start. And, and meanwhile. pick. Meanwhile, the senior is the one leading them in scoring. I just don't. Those kids, I don't think college basketball fit them right now. I want to see what the NBA does with R.J. Davis. Wow. You think they give him a chance, Ty? Do you think he's going to get drafted? And to be honest, maybe I'm crazy, but the, he, he reminds me of, of the kid from uh, Brunson. No way. No. Way. <laughs> yeah. Let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> the kid from Minnesota, Mike Conley. Mike Conley. Wow. And Mike Conley's getting old. Mike Conley was a heck of an actor. He was tough too. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Tough. You're right. I I got one for you, Brian. It's one of ours. Tyson Walker. I think Tyson Walker's a pro. Him and R. J. Him and R. J. Oh, I got a question, V. So you're you NBA guy, and you got a chance to pick Tyson or RJ. Who are you taking? Tyson. Ooh. Pick a Tyson. Ooh. It's so close. And I tell you what, we're gonna see it, right? We're gonna see it. Tyson They're playing. And, and his dad, his dad is a friend of mine, so that. I, I pick Tyson Gas is everybody's friend. Come on, that's ah. yeah. <laughs> Tyson Gas. I go, to, I, I go, to, I go to 95 South all the time. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. I'm just saying, Ty Yo, Tyson. Tyson just got more. He got more. more yeah, he, got, yeah he does. But we talking about, we're talking about, about a kid who stayed at UNC for five years, right? Ty Tyson five. So, that's what I'm saying. They both got great programs. What is the NBA going to do? Because it's going to be a bad look if Tyson or RJ is not either drafted or in some of those camps. Because what are we doing here? We got kids yeah, yeah. that play for five years and they still don't get drafted or get a chance to get on the NBA uh, floor? 
That's terrible. I, I think both of them, they're going to go and help an NBA team next year. Well, let me ask, let me ask you guys one more thing. How many, you know, because there's what, 60 picks in the NBA? How many do you think are even college basketball players are American? Hmm. 30? It's, I think it's going to be half and half. It's gonna so be out half. of the 30 names, are those two guys going to be picked? I would say no, but I think both make camps. I, but that's what I'm saying. I, I don't care about they get drafted or not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these these scouts and these NBA teams know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. They got to do right by kids that, that went to school for five years on that high level. You know, you know, it, it, it's sad. Mm -hmm. It's sad. They got their master's degree. They should be having a master's degree coming out of school. And Tyson, Tyson and pick and roll is crazy. Andre and pick and roll is crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, do they actually play against each other the next round? Don't say that. It does not count. They do. You both need to check the bracket. No way. No way. That's <laughs> a setup. Yo, this That's is a setup. This oh, is crazy. That's the setup. Oh, this is Why crazy. Why these Ziegler brothers were playing in the first round? That's the setup. Right? Mm -hmm. we, that's something we need. That's something we need to watch closely that's and come setup. back and report on. Yeah, that's the setup. That's a good. That's a good matchup right there. That's right, man. It's been brewing and it's happening. So you guys will get to see it tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> what time is the game? I'm not sure, but I, I'm pretty sure North Carolina plays Michigan State tomorrow. Tomorrow? Hold on. I oh, believe yeah. so. It's a rainy day too. I'm saying. And they've been going at they went at it in high school too. Of course. Um, what time? What time? Uh 5 30 tomorrow. 5 30. Oh, yeah, that. That's a big time game. Yeah. There you go, Tiny. We'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, Definitely. Time. Definitely. Wow. That's a big and time. And you know, I, I think they're gonna guard each other, right? Uh Mr. Ray? Yeah, absolutely. If you're a fool not to. Yeah. Because wh whoever backs down on, on that position gonna look bad in the NBA. It could it could it could a lot for the future of both of their if you're a fool college. not to. If you can't hold them in college, how you gonna hold them in the league? Yeah. yeah and that's what both gonna be asked to do, right? Who could they guard at the next level? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You all you all who you can guard. Yeah, yeah. Especially when these point guards are six five and John ja, John ja Morant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So look, fellas, I, I think uh, we should we should uh, end this on a high note right now, um, and come back and reconvene because I'm telling you, this this forum right here with these basketball minds, um, I think some great conversations and some great lessons to be learned. And I think we can help out a lot of coaches because, man, that's all everybody's saying. Coaches, y'all should be paying attention. Coaches, y'all be paying attention. Coaches, you know. So um, thank you, guys. Um, Absolutely. Tomorrow, I I'm going to be hitting everybody up like, yo, y'all watching the game? Because I'm definitely going to be watching the game tomorrow, 5.30. 5.30, let's watch that game. And, then, you know, we, we, we got a lot of conversation to talk about. Um, and then Sunday, if you guys can make it, you coming to the game, Tiny? You go through yeah. the game? Bet. Did Brian, you coming down? I'll be there Sunday. I know John will be watching from his uh home. Uh I watched all those island. high school games sitting right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And hey, yo, my 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 guy Ballhead said uh coaches have beautiful backgrounds. <laughs> 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 oh man look yo thank you guys um yep, yep. appreciate it man this, this has been a classic show right here this has oh. definitely been a classic show all right all right, well, I appreciate all right you. no all doubt right, man. Appreciate all right, all right, you take it thank you guys so much yo we out of here man we out of here this is what we do and yo like big, the candy store man that's <laughs> right we out baby shout out let's, ba kimbo baby that's right. Shout out Love to the Bad Advice Crew. Shout out to the Bad Advice Crew. Peace, peace, peace. <laughs>